Pop quarks aren't quarks, and they aren't elementary. That's what I wanted to talk about today in my series on quarks. Now, first of all, based on its actual decay products, principally a W boson with plus or minus one charge, it has a charge of plus or minus one. Now they'll say that it decays to a W and a bond quark so that they get the two thirds. But the thing is no particle in free space has a fractional charge, no real particle that they detect. And so while they'll say we can't measure the charge of the, of the top because it's too short lived, they can't measure it directly. But they can measure its decay components and charge is conserved. So whatever the decay components total net charge works out to be is what the charge is. And that's one. It's not two thirds. They only get two thirds by assuming that the quark theory is right. They apply the quark theory and then they say, oh, it's two thirds because we apply the quark theory not because they measured it. So it's circular logic based on a acceptance of the theory first and then using the theory to prove that the theory is right. It's purely circular logic. If you look at the actual physical evidence, the top quark has a charge of one, which right there means it's not a quark. Now, another important thing is toponium, a top and an anti-top, are the only compound that we know of that are made of top quarks. And the whole point of having the top quarks is that all these resonances are supposed to be made of the quarks. And nothing's made of the top quark except its own onium resonance. So it doesn't really fit the quark model there either. And then we have the problem is the other five quarks are not directly observable in free space. The top's the only one that they've observed more or less directly, but because of its short life, not so directly, but, but it's a different, it's in a different class. It's not the same. And then you have the fundamental problem that the main decay mode is to a W boson. An elementary quark should not decay to a W boson. That makes no sense. And one elementary particle shouldn't decay to another elementary particle of a completely different type. So a top resonance is not a quark. Whatever the resonance is, is not a quark. And then we have the problem, elementary problems, elementary particles don't decay. And it decays, which makes no sense. Elementary particles should be stable. If they decay to other things, they're made of other things and therefore not elementary. That's been the argument against the proton being elementary since the beginning. Mm -hmm that it's made of other things, so it's not elementary, so they have to fabricate something else that it has to be made of. But that's false logic, because something can be made of something else, as long as that structure is unique to it and stable. But in the case of the top quark, the structure is not unique to it. The W boson exists by itself, and it's not stable. Now we can get a, a glimpse into what the top resonance might be because its mass happens to almost exactly equal the mass of a W boson plus a Z boson. The W, the top mass in one publication is, has a mass of 172.76 GeV per C squared. And if you add up the W and Z boson, you get 171.567 GeV. So it's so close as to be 
almost within the error of the measurements. So we can also look at a relativistic Ohnian orbit where you can determine the mass of a relativistic particle in orbit by dividing it by two times the fine structure constant. And that gives you its relativistic mass energy. And if you take a sigma xi resonance, sum their masses, and divide by two times fine structure constant, you get 172.61. So that right there tells us that we may just have two baryons in a relativistic orbit giving us the energy of the top resonance. And then individually, a sigma resonance can have a mass of 81. And the xi resonance by itself can has, have a mass of 90, which are essentially the masses of the W and Z. So they appear to be baryons in a resonance at relati in relativistic orbits. So that tells us that the top resonance isn't elementary. It's made of something. It may not be exactly the sigma xi. It could be something slightly different with a similar mass in a similar type of orbital arrangement. But it's something like that. That's all it is. And that leads to a problem. Because if you remove the top quark from the quark model, the quark model fails. You have a hole there. They wanted six for a reason, because they had three tiers of lepton, they need three tiers of quarks, and they needed pairs to make it all work. And if you leave a hole there, it doesn't work anymore. And perhaps they could have done something different instead of call, calling bottom onium, the epsilon series, its own onium type resonance, they could have said, oh, that's the top quark, bottom onium, because the bottom quark appears to be charm onium, and the charm appears to be k onium, and the, and the strong appears to be pi onium, making k ions. So the onium theory is really what's going on underneath, but they made it look like quark theory. But if you remove the top, you end up destroying the standard model because then you have to rethink that entire third row. Bottom onium being donium containing four k ions. The tau appears to decay to two k ions and appears to be a d meson and not a lepton at all, based on its decay products. And if the tau is a meson, then there's no reason for the neutrino to be an elementary particle. And if the tau neutrino is not an elementary particle, then the mu shouldn't be either. And muons were arbitrarily called leptons instead of mesons, and perhaps that was wrong. So the second row goes away too. And I recently discussed the neutrino death problem, that if all the energy of the universe gets turned into neutrinos because of neutrino theory, then you end up with a universe dying in neutrino death. All the energy goes away. So that theory is not right. It needs to be fixed. And then as I said about the proton, you could have two elementary particles, the up and down, or you could have one, the proton, it's much more convenient to have one being the proton. But if the up and down aren't elementary, then you don't need gluons and you don't need the W and Z. And I also discussed how photons are composite particles. It requires a dipole. And the Higgs boson has nothing to do with mass. So the top, it's like a game of Jenga. You pull one out and the whole thing collapses. And the standard model should collapse because the top resonances are not quarks and are not elementary. 
Well, I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, please like it, share it with your physicist friends, and subscribe for more. And if you'd like to learn more about particles, I discuss it a lot in some papers I'll link below, but also my particle theory book, Goodbye Quarks, the Indian Theory. And I also have my quantum field theory research in my other books. And so I want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank the rest of you for watching.